Welcome to Andy's Garage, I'm Andy Phillips. Today I'm gonna to show you how to fix a non-working OBD2 port in your vehicle. Let's go ahead and get started. Now what I'm talking about is this port, we'll go under the dash here. You can see that port right up there. That's what I'm talking about. And those ports are needed if you wanna run a diagnostic to check your engine codes, things like that. And that's where you would plug in your device. But with this particular vehicle here, we're getting an error message. I'm gonna connect my OBD2 scanner to it and show you what we're getting. What I'm going to be using in this video is just this cheap little scan tool, OBD2 scan tool. You can pick these up online, Walmart. They're very inexpensive. They give you just a basic code across the top. Then you'll have to do some research to cross-reference that number either online. Sometimes they come with a booklet. So let's go ahead and connect it, and I'll show you the issue that we're having with it being able to connect. With this connected, you can see the screen is illuminated, so we're getting power, but it's not displaying anything on the screen, so it's not sending any signal with the data we need. Now, there's a couple things that can cause the OBD2 port not to communicate with your scan tool. First one would be if there's a, a fuse. However, that's not the case here, because as we saw, we were getting power. The little display screen was lighting up, so power is coming through. If that was completely dead, you want to check your fuses first. To locate the fuses, you want to start by popping your hood, and normally next to the battery in that area, you'll find a fuse box or a fuse and relay center as shown here. If you pop that open, and let's flip that lid over, there's usually a diagram, and on that diagram, it'll list what each fuse is for. You want to look for any ones pertaining to the ECU and check them. This one here is fine. Normally, if it's burned or broken, you want to replace it. This one's fine. So we'll put that one back. The next place to look is on the inside of the vehicle. Here you'll see it says fuse access on the side of the dash. Sometimes they're under the dash, but the same thing with this. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pop this door open and we'll see right there, there's our fuses housed here behind the dash. And if we look on the other side of the, the panel, same thing, it's all laid out. Look for anything pertaining to ECU. Now that that's done, the, the other thing could be is if it's not getting a snug connection into the OBD2 port, sometimes over time, just from plugging in and, and going in and out with that, the little connection prongs can get kind of stretched out and loose. If you're not getting a firm connection, you could still be getting at least the connection to the power lead working, but the rest of the data ones are not working properly. So what we're going to do in this video is we're gonna check that next. So we're gonna take out the port underneath. We're gonna do some tests on it. If that's loose, we're gonna go ahead and fix that. You can see under the dash here, it has these little clips holding it to this metal bracket. If we push those in, you can see how it moves this one pushed in now we can now we can pull it through this side so we can pull this down you want to be careful with it you don't want to be banging it around because you need it to work so now with it down we can inspect everything on it we can see all of the wires look pretty secure here in the back but we'll double check that we have our inputs here and let me get a clearer shot on this You'll notice the two right here on the lower part, they look a little bit widened. They should be tighter to get a better fit. So we'll look at those as well. But an easy test is you can use a paper clip or I just have a safety pin. You can slide it in. That one's a little bit tight. That one's very loose. This one's a little bit tight. This one's completely loose, completely loose, completely loose. A little bit tight so you want it to be a tight fit because when the prongs go in they need to make a contact now i'm going to show you something though this is at least tight enough to where it's getting power when i plug this in you'll see how that lit up this particular scanner when it gets power it'll light up letting you know that there's a connection so we know at least there's power coming in what we need to do now is you have these two little gray little tabs here on the top and bottom. We're gonna push those down so we can slide this out so we can access these and be able to check it properly. Push that down, that one. And then we'll push this side. It's 
So now we can slide this out. But you want to remember what colors go where. You don't want stuff getting mixed up. So pull this out like this. Normally these slide out easier. These on this one are, are pretty tight. I'm not going to be yanking on them because looking in here, the wires are actually nice and solid. I don't want to jeopardize that. So what I'm going to do is just take a little safety pin. And if we come underneath, and I'll get a close up, but there's a little hole right here in the bottom where we can push up on the tab. And that's what we want to do is we want to raise them up to get them tighter. You can see the holes there underneath. I finished pushing these down. So now if we take this, that's tight. That one's tight, tight. That one's tight. Let's go up here. Very tight there, tight there, tight there. Normally this would slide in with no problem. So let's connect the OBD2 scanner. I'm gonna put these back on even though we didn't really need to take them off on this one because they were too hard to pull out. I didn't want to damage them by yanking on the wires. Some other connectors, uh, different auto manufacturers, if you pop off the, the little locks, they can pop up. That'll come out easier, and it's easier than to take a little flat, little flathead screwdriver and widen them that way. We weren't able to get these out. That's why I was had to use the... Um, uh, the needle to push down on them. Um, if that doesn't work, you can also use just a, a little screwdriver like this and then just come from this side and just push down on them gently to get them tighter. Next, we're going to take our OBD2 port. We're going to lock it back into the frame under the dash. Same way we took it out, clip those two tabs in. Make sure that it's nice and secure. You don't want that thing being loose. We'll take our scan tool, plug it back in, see how it looks here. And this already looks good already. We're already getting the display on the screen and it is scanning, which is good before we were getting power, but it wasn't reading anything. Okay, this looks good. It's reading it. And there we go. It's, uh, it's getting a connection and it's registering any fault code. So it's working fine. All right, well, as we saw it, that worked. Fixing those pins, getting a, a nice secure connection, solved the problem. A lot of times that, that is gonna be your, your problem. You wanna make sure that you have a snug fit. Sometimes if you're still getting it glitching out, it doesn't hurt to reset your ECU, your car's computer. If you wanna do that, you can do it by disconnecting the battery and then pressing down your brake to discharge any capacitors as shown here. So to reset the ECU, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the battery, starting with the negative battery cable first, and then we're going to go inside and press the brake down, wait a couple seconds, come back in, reconnect it. So let's take a look. We're going to come in here now and we're going to push the brake down. You may wonder why push the brake. Pushing the brake will discharge any capacitors in the system. So we'll push that down. Wait, if, I don't know, wait maybe about 10 seconds and then we'll head back over, reconnect the battery. Put the positive one on first and then we'll be back and do the negative. And some people may wonder. Um, if the ECU is kind of locked up, hung up, why is the car working? But sometimes that can happen. Um, car can be functioning fine, but just the communication to the OBD2 can be locked up. Put that on.
And that wraps up this quick video on how to fix a non-working OBD2 port. Hope that this video was informative for you, helped you out with maybe any problems you're having connecting yours. Please send me any questions and comments. I would love to hear from you. And as always, I appreciate all the support. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.